one of the most important issues we face as a commonwealth and ultimately as a country is the continued capacity of the interconnectedness of everything uh, to do both good things and very bad things at the same time. And then I think in many ways, uh, bringing our criminal codes up to date, uh, recognizing and appreciating the ubiquity of mobile technology and digital imagery and addressing some of the very real and significant issues associated with cyberbullying, revenge porn, and the inappropriate use of these images is an important opportunity for us to send a message that we here in Massachusetts not only don't tolerate this type of behavior, believe it is in many cases worthy of a felony um, conviction or certainly a felony charge and want to make sure that the message is loud and clear here that we expect people to treat imagery, especially this kind of imagery, with the discretion that's most appropriate. And we worked hard together to get this right. Uh, obviously, technology is changing uh, the way we communicate, the way we live, uh, it's changing the workplace, but we also need to keep up with it in terms of keeping our kids safe, uh, giving the DAs additional tools to work with, and also keeping the bad actors in check. So this particular bill will focus on three specific initiatives. Uh, the first is, is giving the DAs additional tools so that they can better handle situations involving minors. The second piece of this is to engage in a far more aggressive conversation within our school districts across our Commonwealth and with families at home about what this actually means. And in, in the current uh, curriculum in our schools, we do have a cyberbullying uh, requirement. We are looking to amend the cyberbullying requirement for all sc school districts to now incorporate the issue of explicit images in their curriculum and determine how best to have that conversation with students in their schools and with their parents and caretakers at home. As the headmaster pointed out, the school has had a terrific working relationship with my office for several years, particularly with Jackie Lamont, and we've really worked closely with the kids here, the students, to help them navigate the online world safely and to respect others while they are online. Under this law, we'd have the option and the ability to divert juveniles to an educational program so that they can understand the risks and the harm that can come from their actions. But when their activities are, uh, are targeted in the form of cyberbullying, coercion, harassment, uh, as unfortunately does happen, we can address that conduct as well. This legislation that was filed today reflects our experience as prosecutors and a tremendous amount of insight from providers, from nonprofits, and from the youth arrayed behind me. It provides meaningful, proportionate, and age-appropriate responses to emerging offenses, including the aforementioned educational diversion option for most juveniles. It also improves confidentiality, assurances from victims, and maintains constitutional protections of free speech. A major problem is trying to help not just young people, but all people to understand that just because technology makes it possible and easy to do certain things doesn't mean you should. But the law that exists right now aren't up to date. Laws should reflect basic common sense standards when it comes to behavior that has potential to be really damaging to people. This bill will establish educational programs where most kids can be diverted. However, occasionally kids also share explicit images and do so for the express purpose of shaming, embarrassing, and hurting them. This can do real damage to people, again, most often young women, but all kids, boys and girls, are potential targets. This legislation gives law enforcement and the courts options to look at the facts and determine the best way forward to stop the harassment and the harm. Uh, this is going to provide, as you heard today, additional tools for law enforcement and educational program for teens, and it's part of a coordinated and holistic approach. I filed a bill in January, and the governor and lieutenant governor are filing one today. And these bills are a direct response to these concerns. And the Speaker of the House was sufficiently concerned, along with all of my colleagues in the legislature, that he actually sent me here in the middle of budget week to talk to you about what we can do about this. 
I look forward to continuing to partner with two great leaders, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito, to get these bills enacted in this session so that all of the students up on the stage and all of the students in the halls of this school can feel safe in this digital world.